Is all good? Good. Uh, hi, everybody. I'm Scott Buckley. I'm a PhD student from um, Macquarie University in Sydney, Australia. Yeah, my talk is my, my paper is called A Formalization of Parameterized Reference Attribute Grammars. Um, and essentially, what we've done is create a small step operational semantics for dynamically scheduled reference attribute grammars and, and prove some things about the system itself and some programs written in it. So what motivated this research is that uh, there exists currently uh, a number of different well-used, well-researched attribute grammar languages. Um, and these all um, kind of share from a, a common pool of features, uh, reference attribute grammars, circular, higher order, we've got forwarding, we've got various things. Um, they all have these similarities and there are also common algorithms, right, because attribute grammars are a particular way of writing a program. We, we, we have common algorithms that are encoded in all these languages. Um, but there's no way to reason about uh, these algorithms themselves without reasoning about the implementation of language we're using. There's no way to really reason about these features, compare them and, and prove things about them, again, without getting uh, bogged down in the implementation details of the system that we're using. So what we did was we created what we call SIGA, which is an expression language and a small step operational semantics for uh, dynamically scheduled attribute grammars. Um, we, we formalized this in, 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 in Greek, as you'll see. Um, we wrote some extensions. So, um, not all of the, the extensions, that the features we were talking about before, but some of them. Um, we mechanized all of this in Coq, and we proved um, some properties about our system, um, properties about how the extensions relate to each other, and some properties about programs written in these attribute grammars using this system. Um, for the uninitiated, uh, what an attribute grammar is, is a, uh, it's a, it's a small program for uh, operating on a, on a tree. All right, you, you, you're given a, a tree with some data on it, and you're trying to get some more data. So a super simple example is if we want to calculate the, the depth of all of these nodes, um, I've got written in English here in very non-formal terms uh, an attribute formula for calculating the depth of any node, right, which says that the depth is, is one more than my parents and the root's depth is zero. Um, a dynamically scheduled attribute grammar um, uh, as opposed to a, a statically scheduled attribute grammar. We don't just calculate um, all attributes on all nodes from the beginning. We only start evaluating things once a query is made. So in this example, if we wanted to know the depth of node D, we'd follow the formula from the previous slide and say, well, that's one more than the depth of C, which is one more than the depth of A, which is zero. So um, this is how a valuation kicks off in, in this type of attribute grammar system. Um, so let's take a look at the, the, the details of how this system works. So we've got an expression language, um, and, and, and this language uh, has some very very basic features that, that are not exciting, like, uh, you know, expression can be a value, we've got conditionals, we've got function application. Um, the types of the values we, we leave outside the scope, so we just assume there's some types we can use, like, you know, booleans, integers, whatever. Um, lists, you know, we are... Uh, that's outside the scope, we leave it to the system. Um, in our mechanization, we just use Cox type system. Um, conditionals are just there for shortcutting. Um, application is also um, delegated, lifted from the, the system below. Um, and attribution is, is the only kind of interest, interesting thing here. Um, worth noting is that um, uh, we have a type called a node. So these are the types that we say must exist. We have a, a type that is a node, which is just a label for a node on the tree. We've got a type for an attribute, which again is just a label, um, and those attributes are typed. Okay. Now this context function we're going to explain in a bit, so don't worry about that. Um, the, the typing rules are relatively straightforward, as you'd expect, are the type inference rules. Um, if we look at the actual semantics, these are the semantics of condition. They're exactly what you would expect. There's nothing interesting there. Um, the semantics of application, we step the function, then we step the parameter, then, uh, as you can see, an app app. We, we just use an underlying system for function application. So, um, yeah, it's application of application. App, app, yeah. um, so we, we've done it this way because we don't want, when we're reasoning about our programs, we don't want to think about what it means to call a function. Um, we only want to think about attribution. So we've just assumed that that already exists. Um, now, the semantics of attribution are where it's interesting. Um, first thing worth, worth noting is that in, in, the, in the grammar, um, and, uh, the left-hand side of an attribution expression is an expression, which means we can compute a node that then gets attributed upon, which is what an, a reference attribute grammar is, essentially. 
So from the very get-go, we have reference attribute grammars. Um, um, and once we, once we know what node we have and, and what attribute we have, we, we call this little sigma, this little, little uh, sigma, which I'll explain now. So uh, part of the motivation for this research was to, um, to be able to abstract away what is different about all of the modern attribute grammar systems. Right? We, we want to only talk about what's common between them. What's common is that we have uh, relationships between nodes and, and we write formula that, that calculate using these relationships and, and, and the data that's on the nodes. What's different um, is a big part of it is how we define our attribute grammar itself, how we define um, what formula gets used on what nodes. Uh, in some instances, we attach formula to production rules on a grammar, and sometimes we just write an attribute as a, a function or a partial function. Um, there's aspect-oriented stuff as well. There's all these different ways of doing it. We decided we'll abstract all of that away, and we'll just have a, a black box function that we say, this is our node, this is our attribute, give us an expression. Okay? So once again, we're throwing out as much as we can um, so that we're left only with attribute evaluation. So uh, we use sigma to denote a context function and, and yes. Um, so in this example here, which I guess is maybe a little dark, sorry. Um, uh, if, we ask, if we ask a context function for the depth attribute of any node, we're going to get back the, back the expression. We apply the plus one function to um, the, the parent attribute of n and then the depth attribute of that. Okay. Um, now, uh, this context function is, is providing us with the formulas we need to, for our program to execute. Um, but there's more data that's actually needed um, for the execution to happen. Uh, and one of those things is the, the properties of the tree. Okay, so we start with a tree that has some properties on it, some values, like the, the numbers we have here. Um, now, we decided that a property is really just an attribute with a really boring function, which is give, give you this value. So we, um, we, we made it so that our, our context function will return formulas for some things, but also if you ask for the value of A, you're going to get 4. If you ask for the value of B, you're going to get 5. Right. And on the left here, um, we're not uh, providing an implementation of this context function. We're just stating some facts about it because it's a black box. Right? We're not implementing it. We're not telling you how to write that function. We're just saying these are some truths. Right? A's value is going to be a value 4 and so on. Um, similarly, we're taking the structure out of the tree and, and turning those into properties. Okay? So we, we consider um, the child relationship between A and B to be uh, just a reference attribute. Right? So, so A's child 1 attribute returns a reference to B. C's parent attribute returns a reference to A and so on. So in this way, we've, we've taken kind of all of the data about our attribute grammar, our existing tree, all our properties, and we've just said they all are going to be given to us by this function. And all we have left is some nodes, really. Um, so if we take a look at a quick example written in um, this language, um, this is, a, this is a, a simple depth program. Um, and we can say that, uh, yeah, the, the depth, if you're a root, your depth is zero. Otherwise, you're one more than your parent's depth. Um, this is one way of, uh, of implementing, implementing the system, but we also have another way um, where we say, well, if, if you give the root node to the sigma function, it's going to give you zero. And if you give anything else, it's going to give you um, an expression. And uh, because that's sometimes how we do it. If you're applying a, uh, a formula to a production rule, you know, the, the, the system is differentiating between types in that way. So the type no, the node type differentiation can happen inside the sigma function in a, in a tr uh, transparent way. Um, so that's, that's all of the basic system. I mean, there's obviously much more complex examples that we won't look at. Um, but we added uh, parameterization. So to do this, we uh, added, uh, updated the attribution rules so that it always requires a one parameter. So we've said that unparameterized attributes just use the unit parameter or just ignore the parameter. Um, multiple parameterized attributes just take a list, right? And we have programs that do both things, um, both of those things, and they work fine. We've now said that um, the attribute label um, has, a, has a type that it's going to return and a type that it expects, right? It's a, it's a very type, um, strictly type thing. Um, and now our context, the type of our context function is now kind of dependent. Um, 
we're no longer just giving it a node and an attribute and getting an expression back. We're now giving a node, an attribute, and parameter, and it's going to give us back what we need. And, and we don't care how it uses all those things. Um, here we have the semantics for, for parameterized attribution, which are, again, pretty straightforward. We step the left-hand side to a value. We step the right-hand side to a, a value, of the, which is um, the parameter type, which is enforced by the type inference rules. Um, and then we, in the same way, we just call our, our context function after the, for the um, expression that's going to be used. Um, caching, we implemented caching as well. We added one more expression rule, which is a, um, this kind of says, uh, this looks like a statement, but I, I promise it's an expression. Um, the sta uh, this expression is um, n dot a of v will give us this expression, okay? Um, so we, um, uh, you, you can see in the attribute application rule, um, we get this expression, instead of just jumping to the expression, we wrap it inside this thing that just remembers what we're evaluating. Um, we evaluate it, and then once we've finished, once we've got an actual value, we use that wrapper to say, okay, our context function is now updating, right? So the context changes as you evaluate if, if you're using this caching extension. Um, and again, you can see um, in this cache write rule, um, we're not, again, we're not defining exactly how the caching happens, how we store anything. We're just saying we used to have a context function that performed a certain way. Now we have a context function that performs the same way, except if you give those values, you get this value back, right? Uh, we're just saying it remembers it somehow, and we're going to get a value back next time, okay? So we've, we've boiled down caching as, as much as we can. Um, we've mechanized it. I, I don't expect you to read this. I'm not running through this, but uh, we've mechanized everything in Coq um, uh, using kind of the, the standard methods. It's all the um, artifact is... Is, um, is there, it's available, and it was evaluated. Um, we, um, using um, both the paper, the paper formalism and the cock mechanism, mechanization, we proved various properties of the system. Very basic properties at first, like the step relationship is, is uh, deterministic. The step relationship has, holds strong progress. Um, the way we implemented it, uh, type um, preservation is, is given for free because we use the, um, uh, yeah, we use the system such that um, you can't possibly make a step to a different type. Um, we've proven some meta-theoretic things about the system. Um, these were a, a lot harder. So this example is case irrelevant. So we've said um, if you step to, if, if you do a full computation with caching and if you do a full computation without caching, you get the same value, right? So we've we've proven that the caching doesn't change your output, and that would really took a long time to prove. Um, I uh, I know it's been uh, what has it been a few months since we submitted, but I've been on vacation since the day I submitted this paper, and um, uh, but I still managed to eventually get this get this proof out. Um, we've proved some comparative properties about programs written in in this system, so we took we took the Pico Java example from one of Ural's papers. Uh, we took uh, her algorithm for name analysis and uh, very faithfully translated it into ours. We took Tony's equivalent, uh, not equivalent, Tony's alternate approach to name analysis, and we also encoded it. So there are these two different approaches to name analysis. One which goes looking like a, we're using this decal function here. We, we want to say where was this ver variable decal? De declared, one goes looking and um, and finds it. The other stores an environment and, and uses that as a library to look up. And we proved that we always get the same answer. Um, which this this proof was kind of the starting point for what we wanted to do at the end of this. And, and we uh, I've got an asterisk there. Um, I haven't finished mechanizing this proof. We've done it on paper. We've used our system, our formalism, and proved it on paper. The the mechanization um, is pretty difficult. <laughs> so we're getting there. We'll get there. Yeah. Um, so I guess I talked really quickly because it's only 14 minutes. But uh, what we've done in summary is we've created a, a small step operational semantics for dynamically scheduled reference parameterized cached attribute grammar evaluation. Um, yeah, we've written some extensions. We've mechanized things. Uh, we've, we've proved some interesting things about the system and, and 
really that what we want to do was prove some system, prove some properties about programs written in that system. Um, and we were able to do that because we threw away all these implementation details. Um, the future work, uh, there's, there's lots more to do. I want to finish mechanizing all these proofs. I want to write more proofs. I want to add um, higher order attributes. I want to add forwarding. I want to add circular um, attributes, fixed point iterative attributes. The, the reason that's asterisked is that um, the way we implement certification gets us kind of a lot of the way there. We, we've, we've already got a record of, of, of what we're caching as we get, uh, what we're uh, evaluating as we go, and that's going to help. Um, there is a hiccup, not a hiccup, there is a, a challenge, which is that our system does not enforce that you're using a tree. We, we just have nodes and they have relationships. We don't know that we have a tree, and that means we can't do induction because we don't know that, that the path will ever end. Um, so I'm in the process of writing some systems that, um, uh, like, we'll prove something of the tree, prove something of our, of our tree given that it's a tree. So we've got to formalize what it means to be a tree in, in this system. And yeah, we'll, we'll get there. So there are some more tools I want to write to make it easier to, to prove certain types of things. Um, and that's me. Thank you. Any questions?